Let's let this go here. Okay. President of the Senate, Alexander Steffens, the Partisan Act passed by the Confederate Congress in early 1862 has allowed various irregular units to disrupt federal armies that have invaded our territory, although some such partisans have been successful, others have not. Federal reprisers have made such bands unpopular among the civilian population and some of our troops, or some of our top field commanders, sorry, who are calling for the act to be repealed. Should we repeal the act? No. Um, the partisan bands will continue to trouble the federal advance in existing areas. Should we repeal the act? Okay. Repeal the act? No. Okay. This is sort of confusing. I would have repealed the act, yes, but um, but no new bands will be formed in the Deep South. Alternatively, we can announce the government's support for partisans. Yes. Um, support the partisans, yes. Repeal the Partisan Act. No, we're going to go no to the partisans. Right, they're going out to Charleston, South Carolina, and they're going to New Orleans area. The contact. Ooh, they got off. Well, we weren't terribly good either. That went well. Is it bombarding the fort or the fort? It looks like not the attacking the ships. Uh, they're bumping into ours. Yeah, that went well for us. That was painful. Even more painful that we lost the whole unit. If they can hold out, probably not as it's looking like. Yeah, um, the answer is no. They can't hold out. These guys down here, just I know, are just about doomed. If not the first turn, the second turn. Doing better than I thought. Oh, well, yeah. I've seen them normally crush by now. Maybe I should have increased their equipment levels. They got Knoxville. Oh good, we know there's some Union troops up in Cleveland. We were going to be in Cleveland. Hmm. Who knows, maybe we'll be the all-conquering Confederates. Well, this is sort of a good place to start.
I know there's some forces there, so, well, we'll push in with these guys, yeah. I didn't want to do it with the unit that was 6 strength. Okay. Just a little too weak. I'm going to go up and kill that balloon. I think it's a very good reconnaissance tool there. Not played with though any forces that had balloons in this game yet, but taking that out will be helpful, I think. Just swap these two. That way we have a good unit. Up on the front lines. Um, I don't know that we need to hunt. There. Well. Nobody looks up. Okay. Now down here. Let's see if we can damage that ship successfully and with very little damage for us. Keep those alive now. We had a fort down here that was bombarded? Yeah, let's make sure that we... Oh, well, you know. Let's see about fort modernization. Okay, so since it's still fairly intact, hopefully that will keep it better condition. Now, okay, uh, I think we should just stay on the defensive here. Hey, Karna, how you doing? You can come down here to keep from getting cut off. You guys can ride back to there. Oh, I think we're good there. And sometimes the defensive is just sort of the way to go. And sometimes it should be to attack. Um, oh, that's a... we're going to do is retreat you to here. You're going to come down and hold here. You're going to come up to there. You're going to take the damage. Oh, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. You are going to get reinforced. There we go. So we've taken out a Yankee division. Uh, 
Okay. Um, yeah, that was the one we attacked with this turn, and so is that, so we can't do any replacements there. Did we have... No, we have not. Oh, good. Well, let's head out there. Hmm. Uh, well, I can secure that. I want to get up to there. Um, Let's take a look at supplies. <coughs> Excuse me. That ain't going to be good. So let's come down here and follow these guys up and around. There's a lot to see about taking. There. Now we have back here. Wave number two. Preparing our troop ships. These, oh, these guys here. Oh, they needed to be. I should have been with last turn. Well, we'll get our engineers next time, I guess. And these guys are going to go to New Orleans area. Yep, mistakes were made. Now, um, to purchasing, go back over to the Confederacy. Might as well make them as useful as possible. And so we can do that. Division, we could theoretically get, but by the time we do that, well, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Back to the French a Brigade. But if we're going to make it a good brigade, that's going to go way over. So we're going to wait till we get more forces. We want to have, we don't want the French to just be sort of weak occupation troops. You know, we're going to risk this. Nobody here? Okay. Well, we're going to go back. Try to clear that out to get a little bit, maybe more supplies coming in. Well, I think that is their turn. The Junta Superior proclaims a second Mexican empire in Mexico City. The first one being under um, uh, 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 Mexican Empire moves government to the city of Mexico. Um, under um, uh, control, yeah, um, boy, uh, Santa Ana, of course. 
The one who, you know, um, the Alamo. Whatnot. West Virginia's Confederate sympathizer sabotage railroad. West Virginia, at Harper's Ferry. Reinforcing. Oh well. Mistakes were made. Oh, I forgot to reinforce those guys. Damn, more mistakes were made. It's upgrading down here, it looks like. I don't know. Seems like taking a while. But yeah, it's not crashing or anything. Okay. Ooh, they took that one hard. They did slightly better than us. Yeah, they're going to win out here because of my mistake. It was going to win anyways, but... A little easier. Once they take that city at the end of the turn, the Navajo just surrender, which is reasonable. Of course, if they evacuate the... Yep, well, I don't know what that does to it. Yep, they surrender. Gold discovered near Virginia City, Nevada. Confederate partisans cause trouble. Yep, blockade Vicksburg. And the French fleet arrives. Okay, intelligence reports, good, more intelligence reports, yes, brigade there, brigade spotted there, okay, um, yes, and yes, there, there we go, all right, we got these guys down here, We got an enemy contact, damn. Okay, I was hoping to spot some of these guys before we really contacted them. We knew he was there. Damn. Okay, well. Too much advantage with that. At least that's my opinion. Um, okay, maybe try the iron clads as the scouting vessels? Mm -hmm.
Hopefully that will give us... Good advantage to sweep the seas of the Yankee Navy. Those are dangerous, the, the ironclads, that is. Let's come up here with you, here, enemy contact. Okay, we found here. Um, You know, with this, I really love fully taking units off the map, not just... ...damaging them to have them come back again and again. Um... We got a contact here. Oh shit, okay. We can take that out. Now some of these other guys are dangerous. But that is particularly dangerous. Okay, let's see if we can do a big damage and come back into port. Now, um, because these monitors I do believe are dangerous, we're going to move uh, at least the unarmored vessels that survived. Um out oh enemy contact uh oh no damage okay um yeah and that now that doesn't look like a favorable exchange there well, we're really hurting the Yankee Navy down here. Hopefully going to open up eventually some uh, trade routes. Well, we got Norfolk back. There very well probably someone is down in Elizabeth City down there. Hello, Terence from Belgium. So who's winning the war on cost? Uh, the Axis of the Grey Coats or the Union of Blues? Well, the Confederates are doing very well because the French have entered the war on their side with this DLC. Hello, Latinus, how you doing? Yes, it's been a while since I've seen you. Good to see you again. Like to see familiar faces back. We must be doing something right. At least I hope we are. 
Okay. Let me see if I can remember. Litwanus. 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 Okay. Litwanus. Litwanus. Okay. Try to remember. I'm not good with names. I'm unfamiliar with pronouncing. Mm. Well, we're going to think about this for a moment. I just don't know how much I should be on the offensive versus the defensive. Sometimes it's fairly clear, like here and here, that this is not going to be a favorable rate of exchange. So we're going to reinforce, 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 but over here. They sort of blundered into our trap. Not really a trap, but... Or a planned trap, at least. No, they can't. Damn. That means that unit gets to survive. Let's move. Oh, shit. Oh, it's this big gun. Okay, well... Hmm. Trying to gonna do that to just sort of get rail connection and supply throughput. I guess we'll move up to this. I don't know. To Natchez. Um, no, it's not how it went historically. <laughs> This is this is um, what we're showing off here. Is I guess we can talk about it again. Um, is the um, uh, DLC for the American Civil or Strategic Command American Civil War is the base game. We're showing off uh, the DLC called Wars in a, War Wars in the Americas. Um, some are his and they add um, five new wars um, with the DLC. Some are historical, like the Spanish-American War or the um, uh, Mexican-American War. Or there's like this scenario is a scenario based on the Confederacy or the French coming in on the side of the Confederacy. So um, there is, you know, that. And there's a few others that are set down in um, South America, which I really haven't played uh much of uh, no we'll just we'll stay on the stay on the defensive yes sacre bleu now if we can take a piece off the board I'd rather have the damage on the interior one here less damage there is that more likely to survive now, what we're going to do here is we're going to switch these. Um, no, we don't want to disband. Okay. Uh, okay, fortify. I guess we probably can't do it after moving, but I wanted them up on the front. Hello, Hedge 14. Supported the American Republic. Later, the American Republic supported the French Republic. Yeah. Um... He was talking to one of my friends the other day, this last weekend, how he was saying um, that Louis the um, Louis the Fifteenth support. I think it's Louis the Fifteenth, but Louis number whatever support in the American Revolution. Um, was the main cause for um, the French Revolution. I would say, uh, you know, or in that's giving all the aid to um, the Americans was the cause, spending all that money. I would say it wasn't so much that. It was, um, oh, I forget, but the battle, uh, which island, like a Dominica, one of these islands, the Battle of the Saints, in which... Um, 
helpful. Oh, I have the book here. I should probably just pull it off the shelf here and look it up about. Um, get the blurb on the back of it here. De Grasse. Um, that's the um, the French. Okay. Uh, read here on the back. Uh, not really saying, but um, the Battle of the Saints and um, Admiral De Grasse's um, French fleet gets destroyed. De Grasse's um, is captured by the British. It's that, and that happens at well after the surrender at Yorktown. I'm not sure on the dates whether technically America was still at war, but basically the war had stopped. The, all the, the only thing that the British were occupying in, down in the southern American colonies, I mean, because Canada was the American colonies as well, but was New York City area and Long Island. That was about all they were occupying at the time, um, if, if even that. And there's peace talks going on in Paris. Um, but there's still a lot of battles over the, you know, Sugar Islands. And it's the destruction of that fleet and the rebuilding of the French fleet um, is what bankrupts the, Fran the French. And then, yes, um, the Americans sort of ally themselves with the French Republic um, since Louis the... Okay, it might be wrong, but um, French since Louis the Fifteenth were in dire straits financially too. Many, oh, yes. I mean, it's not there. Okay, it's not one thing does it. Absolutely, you're right about that. And I believe um, when it's an old quote I heard a long time ago, um, you know, regarding Louis XIV um, and all of his expansionist wars um uh you know someone you know asked well what what's going to happen um and he says well after me it's going to be chaos i think was you know obviously a translated quote or something so um yeah it's it's a problem since louis the 14th um but it's definitely it's definitely exacerbated by destruction of the French fleet and, and the cost of rebuilding it. Um, yeah, die Louis the Sixteenth. Oh, I know he died on the um, guillotine. Not enough food. Well, the f okay. Well, I mean, I could go into a lot of stuff. Uh, I love talking about history, but I do want to sort of stay on topic of the American Civil War here and, and all this stuff. But it does relate because it's American um, uh, French relations here. Um, the French system was set up so that if you had a patent of nobility, meaning a noble title, basically you didn't pay taxes. So the tax burden really was pushed down onto the middle class, which was very, very small, obviously, because it's a pre-industrialized society, and uh, the working poor. They were paying all the taxes, not like income taxes for the working poor, but the things they were eating uh, were taxed, or the cloth that they were wearing, you know, the clothes that they were wearing was taxed. And to bring, like, food and whatnot into Paris was taxed. And so the whole system was collapsing. I don't, you know, you can look at a particular failed harvest and whatnot at a particular time. And that's sort of um, pushing it into, um, you know, uh, dire dire straits that will force people into violent um rebellion as it were but um yeah a lot of things contributed to the to the collapse of the french monarchy and there's also social political things too it's not all economics uh i think and this is not talking about politics what i'm going to say here in a moment it's talking about historical thought because he was also a historian, and he sets up a historic, uh, um, sort of a school of thought for history, sort of two of them. Um, but Marxist history, 
and a lot of non socialist non communist you know what we would talk classical conservatives have bought into Marxist history in that the main motivator for historical trends and historical things is economics because marx Marx viewed everything through economics. I disagree considerably with that idea that um, economics is the main motivator for history. I think the um, things like religion, things like personalities, things like um, what we would know today as national identities, um, you know, cultural identities, uh, are a massive motivator um, on history so that we can look at the reasons economically for the French state to fall apart, and that those were those were major, but also um, a lot of cultural shifts going on with people like Rousseau or people like Benjamin Franklin, who was often in Paris and um, known there, um, and his writings and Thomas Paine's writings um, and the collapse of the social order of royalist France was a major, major factor as well as economic um, and dithering of Louis the Sixteenth of constantly shifting policies back and forth and a lot of reasons that go into um, why things go on. But yes, had the French government, the French economic system had all been economically great, there probably would not, not have been the revolution. But there's been like revolts or whatever you want to call it in French and British history for, you know, all, you know, all the time, you know, going way back that, you know, um, the, the economy allowed it to happen, shall we say. Okay, so if we were to attack here, yeah, that would be severely damaging to our forces. But we would do that. Oh, that's not as bad as I thought. These guys could come up here and be damaged somewhat. And now to put the boot in here, here and take it out okay and now that that has taken that oh we can't get there oh man okay um i guess we do, i don't want to occupy it with too weak of a forces that'll get surrounded and pounded uh but you could come up to there because if you had been there you would have been able to get to there Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to withdraw you back here because we want to get you to better supply of Those look like um, Brigade Union. Well, Nope, we're not going to follow them. Well, I think that's somewhat protecting our forces from their big fleets. And I see a few people checking their points. Um, Everyone know, uh, should I should bring this up more often. I think all of us streamers here on Slytherin TV should bring it up more often. The more you watch on Slytherin TV um, when you're logged in, so remember to follow the channel, uh, you will earn Slith points that you can redeem for free DLCs and um, games. All you, If you want to find out more about that, just... Um,
scroll down and look at this list store. And in mentioning that, we do have some new people here, I think, maybe. Um, I love streaming here for Slithering TV, but I do have my own YouTube channel in which I play many Slithering games and others. Um, games. Mostly historical. And I talk about the history around the game, so you might want to open a new window and um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I stream also for myself on Twitch mostly on the weekends um, on, here on Twitch, and you can follow me there on Twitch TV. But remember to follow here, too, so that you can um, earn slists and get know when we are, um, you know, live. Yes, Terence from Belgium. Yeah, this is one one um, Twitch channel in which you... And it takes a, a bit of watching. Now, of course, uh, and you can look at the schedule, though I, for some reason, my, my stream wasn't on that schedule, though I'm uh, different people post the schedule versus scheduling the streams. Um, so, um, but uh, you don't have to have the audio up. And of course, you can minimize the window if you really don't want to listen to me or somebody else. If it's a game you're not terribly interested in or whatever, um, you can check. You, you don't have to. Um, you know, to watch everything in, in detail, as it were. We're going to go that way. Hmm. I do want to occupy a bunch of territory here. Roads are very important with this game, so keep that in mind as you move about. They're going to go the Mexican reserve that way. Well, with Tunis, um, hope I'm remembering that right. Yeah, um, you know it's. Not not every game is for everybody, and and I understand that. Um, well, okay, I I'm a big fan of the Strategic Command series. My two favorite DLCs, and they're free. There's also a free DLC for this game that is the Franco-Prussian War, which I played through, and I really like that. Um, that's a free DLC where this is these five together are paid. I don't remember the price. Um, since Slytherin gives me these games, whether Matrix or Slytherin, to stream for you, I don't really pay much attention to the price. You have to determine whether, how many hours of enjoyment you're going to get out of it, what's your budget, if it's worth paying for. Um, I'm really, quite honestly, not a salesman. I don't see myself as such. I see myself as a presenter. I'm presenting the games. You then make the, the choice out of that. Um, but my two favorites still are the um, DLCs, and it's for Strategic Command World War I. The Ludendorff Offensive and the, um, the, the, the Schlieffen Plan Offensive. Those DLCs, instead of the whole American Civil War, it's gone down to sort of divisions and brigades um, shorter turns. That's my favorite. Quite honestly, that's my favorite. What I like, but doesn't doesn't seem to be, in my opinion, and I'll criticize games here on Slytherin. Um, Can we say the lack of the ability to 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 have a grand battle in this? We 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 can do a pretty good job at at coming up, crushing a few units, moving. So the mechanic of the game to me, whether it's grand strat, you know, the whole World War One thing, or like the the sort of divisional base particular operations with this mechanic seems to work the best. 
Um, I think this would work the best if you sort of create a game like this. You know, this sort of map. And that's like the greatest extent of it. You know, the Army of Northern Virginia with the, you know, the Shenandoah Valley campaign, uh, you know, the, you know, many more hexes. You're moving um, brigades and divisions around a um, little more set up. And I could see that working a li little better um, kind of thing like that. So, um, you know, um, this is, this is, I, I'm enjoying this. This is very enjoyable, but maybe it's not the best possible mechanics for this scale of the game. Um, the Franco-Prussian War, because again, it's a, it's a, um, you know, it's just, uh, northern france and a bit of western germany sort of the map um so it isn't you know that's a little little better um so yeah um but quite honestly yeah there's some other good american civil war so Amer there's other american good civil war games but there isn't other good um Franco-Prussian war games. Um, and so I, I do recommend it, but you, you've got to make the, you got to make the choice over how much detail versus how much, um, scale and, and sort of fun you want to play into the game. Uh, I try to evaluate these games based upon what they try to be, not, um, entirely out of oh i don't know how to put this you know does it 100 percent accurately model the american civil war you know of a like a particular game and the answer for this is no but is this a fun good strategy game set based in the civil war with a lot of historical perspective absolutely so you know it's it's that kind of thing you know how deep how detailed do you want it to be all right now we need to look over here at the french Let's look at purchasing up to France. Can we afford a core yet? I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, oh, well, we wanted to, I guess, just more come over to the Confederacy here. Let's see. Can we afford 585? Uh, no. Oh, no. We're, oh, we're at six. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's pr purchase another core. A lot of busy work and not much strategic decisions can be made in uh, the western part of this map. Yes, you're absolutely right. Um, I'm sometimes forgetting stuff out here. Um, you know, the Trans-Mississippi Campaign. You know, it's... Now, with this scenario and the whole Mexican War added to it, it does sort of add to it. Oh, like I almost forgot him to reinforce. Now I'm trying to keep this uh, chatting with you guys and trying to keep things flowing fairly quickly. I, I know I'm missing things that if I just played slowly on my own, I would be doing better with. Um, I'm sure of that. Um, but Because, yeah, I I could see a good American Civil War that, yeah, you, you have the western bank of the, the Mississippi as, um, you know, in the game, you know, meaning some units over here on this side. But basically the, the whole trans-Mississippi campaign, you know, um, out here, Arkansas, Texas, whatnot, uh, as not being necessary to to like you say the the strategic decisions of the American Civil War. Okay, let's see. Any of these guys that we can reinforce. No. We're gonna see about that. All right. Well let's give the Yankees their turn. Confederate fighting spirit boosted by the recapture of Norfolk. 
Union settlers and you know, celebrate the end of the Navajo Wars. Now, I will say this. Southern sympathizers from West Virginia recruited into the Confederate Army. Okay, we got another unit. Pro-Confederate bandits in Kentucky. The more matrix more more of these other games um that um matrix sells the more likely we're going to see stuff outside of some of the classic era of like world war ii i mean world war ii is great games may set in the america you know world war ii are going to sell well but i would love to see them make um an 18th century uh, game or a 17th... Yeah, I was afraid of the... with the monitors going after my wooden ships. Just complete... Shh. I was hoping my... Um, this line here would keep them from getting in. But, um, you know, I would love to see some... particularly 18th century, but some 17th century war games come out. But, you know, are they going to sell enough? To make it worthwhile. There's a whole there are decisions to be made at, at how much you want to commit to the West. Absolutely. I mean, it's... You know... It's an interesting thing. Um, There's a lot of, shall we say, strategic momentum could be gained or, or lost on some of these campaigns. Now, I'm, I'm mostly, you know, if you play this scenario a few times, you could learn it better, uh, maybe. But I'm mostly playing on just on the defensive right now to... To see how it goes, to keep the Confederacy as live as long as possible until we get the French in here to to change the equation, as it were. Ah, well, thanks, Pixel. How you doing? I'll have a drink of Coke, that is. Karl Marx finishes writing theories of surplus value, the fourth volume of Das Kapital. I'm refraining from giving my um, Austerlitz ship of the line sunk. Yes. Um, my sort of political statements on Marx. I was talking just about his, his examinations of history. Okay, well, we've got Ships to sink to clear out of the way so that we don't. Lose our forces here. Um, good. Good. Better it. Ironclads are doing us well. Now, out here, um, if we were to attack, we could do that, but I think we will just keep reinforcing. Keep delaying. Now, here. Um... Suffer casualties, but we can attack and retreat. Come up here, suffer no, no casualties, okay. And attack and secure New Orleans. So New Orleans has been secured. 
now here um uh, well um yes well we're yeah the french exactly pixel french intervention the french country the most victories in the world the only only to be known for retreating. Yes, Napoleon the Third is singing Dixie. Way down south in Dixie's land. And no, I'm not going to inflict my singing upon you, so don't have to worry about that. Um, You're just not out. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a force there that I don't really want to bump into. And take them out. Hopefully without too much damage. Yes, good. So we have New Orleans. Um, we'd like to get Pensacola back. Now, over here, um, well, good thing we didn't quite do that. Let's come in here and offload Okay, let's get these guys on railroads. So that we can get them that's somewhere else than just right down here. Let's put us right there and there. Um, now we should probably be about bombarding. Here. Well, maybe we need troops to take that, really. Well, we have, we have Charleston here. Now, the French are on Dixie's side, so they're just coming ashore here. Um, these guys were loaded as an invasion force, where these Frenchmen were just loaded on as transports to need to get off in a harbor. So we needed to find a nice... Yeah, enemy contact. Expected that. Let's see if we can do big damage. Um, oh, well, you're stuck out there. But, yeah, we're cleaning up. Hopefully you won't get sunk. Right. Okay. Um, oh, we're going to take this. Oh, nobody's here. Well, wow. okay. Um, yeah, I guess you'll stay there. You'll take that next turn. Um... See what we can do here.
So he went all the way to there. Now, no, he can't make the attack up and return. All right. 